So we have um, today's um, two of today's speakers. Uh, one is Xusheng and the other one is Anis, who will participate in the panel. While for Trina and uh, for Ryzen, we will have uh, two other presenters. Um, Trina will be presented by um, Gonzalo de la, de la Vina. He's the head of Trina's quickly expanding European team, which is now uh, leading in his, if I'm correct, sixth year. And then we have with us uh, Leon Chuang, um, who is the Global Marketing Director at Ryzen Energy and who's been in solar also for quite a while, working for a number of solar companies before he joined Ryzen. So um, what we want to do in this panel is we simply want to reflect what we've learned today and also go beyond simply to understand actually yeah, in, a, in a comprehensive um, way what, uh, what are the advantages, challenges of two 10 millimeter modules. Um, maybe just one word to the panelists again. Uh, so for housekeeping, digital panels, panels are obviously more challenging for, for moderators uh, when it comes to lively interaction. So uh, I still would like to have this uh, as interactive as possible. So please talk to each other and um, not just answer my questions. Um, just uh, go ahead, raise your hand and then uh, the others see that you will speak and, uh, and then just start. Um, so um, and for the audience, again, I think you've done a great job so far. Just please contribute with questions, comments via the chat function. Um, I will try to integrate that into my, um, my question, uh, into my structure. And, um, and otherwise, um, uh, if, it's, uh, uh, if, if it's not taken, I think someone hopefully will pick it up. We have a couple of people from the companies and from our team um, also um, participating in the chat. So um, let's um, start maybe on once again, um, so just to, just in case um, everyone is once again on, on, the, on the same, uh, same level. So, um, and just in case actually, even if you repeat yourself, can you, can you all once again simply say, what are your expansion plans in general? Um, quickly and what's um, the share of 210 for this? Um, so maybe let's start with Gonzalo. So what we see here on the, on the, um, on this, is this slide in the background. Good afternoon, Michael. Servus. Servus. Um, good, good, to, good to be here. Good to see you. Hopefully next time. Well, next time we'll take some time in life. <laughs> Inter um, yeah. Yeah, uh, hopefully, hopefully, which, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a question. No, thank you for, for having me here, and which is a very, very interesting topic also for myself and, and for the company, for Trina, as we are um, betting and expanding and investing a lot into the 210 millimeter technology. Um, I would say that we were one of the first ones um, to, to initiate this or to develop this, this technology. And as you can imagine, we have quite uh, aggressive uh, expansion plans. And so alone last year, we finished 2020 with a capacity of around 10 gigawatts, just uh, for the 210. And uh, this year, the plan is to finish the year with around 25 gigawatts. And next year, we should have a number close to, close to 50 gigawatts. Okay, well, um, maybe um, Sushang wants, can you can you can you share your okay, okay so for Canadian solar our capacity is around uh, 20 gigawatt today and uh, for uh, the end of this year uh, I think we will also expand to around uh, 30 gigawatt and uh, uh, we are uh, 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 we, we, we have all the manufacturing chains which means we are we have our own module on sale and also we are building our in God capacity, also the wavelength capacity. Uh, in this way, we can control our cost uh, in a certain level. So, which uh, which means we our module product can be 
uh, more competitive on the market. Yeah, so this is our expansion plan. And for the technology, I think we invest a lot on the top kind of HAT and uh, we will see in the recent days uh, which technology we choose in the future for our future expansion plan. Yeah. Okay, Leon? Uh, yeah, uh, hello Michael and hello Dr. Wang, hello Gonzola and hello everybody. First, I want to introduce a little bit uh, about the Ryzen's uh, capacity uh, uh, in 2010, uh, sorry, 2020. So in 2020, the uh, uh, end of 2020, we have the 13 capacity of the uh, uh, module capacity. And then <clears throat> we didn't have too much about the like, uh, 210, I mean 210 uh, capacity. We, uh, in the end of the year, we only have three gigawatt to five gigawatts capacity. So, um, no, according to the complexity, we didn't have too much, like a, too much strong shipment like China, but we had, uh, we have very good, uh, successful, uh, uh, achievements to, po uh, to Poland, to, uh, to Middle East, and uh, to, uh, Indonesia. So we have, uh, we have done many, many, like, uh, 210, uh, projects in, uh, overseas in Europe, in also in uh, Ukraine, so uh, around around one gigawatt, not that much, yeah. And in 2000, 2021, we really want to have uh, more market share about two ten. So the, uh, the expansion of our capacity, capacity, we plan to have new capacity or uh, in the end of this year uh, about uh, twenty eight gigawatts. Um, so compared to this year, it's like a, it's like a 15 uh, gigawatts uh, up. And this is our 0210, I mean 210 uh, capacity. Uh, so this is our expansion, yeah. Okay, so maybe um, once again, so um, I think Anis, um, I think he will join a little bit later. Um, so he he had um, another meeting, but um, so um, we we all he also discussed some some challenges actually going to to ten. So um, when 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 we look into and you all have ambitious um, production plans. If we really go from ingots mo to modules, actually, can you maybe um, simply um, also mention what 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 the biggest um, challenges were that you met and those that you still have to circumvent Anis for example pointed <clears throat> to wet etching um, and, and and some bow issues um. so how about we start from 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 China again or or me <laughs> I don't know uh, okay thank you thank you so um, I think the problem, uh, the the challenge is, uh, is when we when China and uh, Dryzen decided to have a, uh, to to have the capacity to, to do the capacity of two ten, we have the challenge of like uh, the the different standards. So at the first we have uh, 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 Ryzen is the first one who has the. Uh, to to ten modules the design and then right uh, China is going to have a, a new uh, coming up with a five hundred watts. We at that time we um, we we in there we fight with China a lot and then we found out that uh, we are not trying to fight each other. We have to co co cooperate with each other to uh, cooperate with each other's uh, standards. So, so make our standards uh, the same and make uh, the customer has a better benefits. So this is the first, uh, uh, this is I think it's the first challenge, but uh, after the challenge, we make uh, both th these two companies to make this challenge becomes our uh, support to make, uh, to help each other to grow up uh, faster. And then CSI joins, we, ha we have the, we have this uh, uh, 210 leaks uh, bigger and better and unite the standards. This is, uh, I think it's a very good chance uh, to a char big challenge and it becomes a chance. Gonzalo, maybe then you. Yeah, no, it's a good, it's a good point that Leon brought. Um, I mean, indeed, it's a new technology, it's a new module size. You know, before all the companies were used to a 60 cell or 72 cell or whatever module, 
all your perks, so it was quite uh, simple. And now you have now this new technology, well, which is not so new because it exists at least the wafer since 20 years in the semiconductor industry. I was selling uh, uh, semiconductors with 300 millimeter wafers already in 2001. Um, but as Leon said, I mean, right now we have to work on standardization, and this is why Trina was one of the founding partners of the 600 uh, watt plus alliance. Um, so to make it easier and to define a standard that can be used by almost everybody and of course at the most economical way. So this is something we're working on and where we still have to do more. Okay. Maybe Sushan? Okay, so I think the most challenge point is the uh, when people go to 210, uh, other people will say, say you have uh, lots of problem in manufacturing. And the yield is, uh, it will be a big problem. You have the yield on the income level, on the wafer level, on the sale level, on the module level. There's no doubt the sale efficiency should be same compared with uh, 182 or 166. But the sale yield uh, may be much lower. Say uh, for the standard line, uh, 166, the sale yield may be 98%, uh, uh, which is very high. When you go to YD2, maybe the yield uh, is just the one percent lower. But when you go to 210, maybe five percent lower. So, so that means you have lots of uh, byproducts. All the manufacturers will be as high as, high as uh, um, sometime you cannot burn them in the future. But when you go real production, you will find uh, they will. You have lots of uh, countermeasures to bring the yield up to a, a suitable level. Uh, which means uh, just uh, a little gap compared with Y66. In this way, uh, we found the 210 is uh, able to be manufactured. Uh, it's not that difficult as uh, people mentioned before, say uh, we can do 1D2 but never go 210 because the wafer is too large. But we think now the production uh, is okay for 210. So uh, if uh, all the yield can be conquered in, 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 in factory, uh, then we sure we need to choose 210 because it will be a small on the module level, on the LCOE level. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and you, there's no issues for equipment, materials anymore. So that is all sorted out and you're happy with what you can get to now really speed up expansion. Yeah, I think 210, everything is already ready and uh, uh, we are already in, in mass production. So that means everything is ready. Right, okay. And we, we have also set up the new, well, the big factories, factories that were made especially for, for the manufacturing, for the equipment of the 210. And we have signed a couple of joint ventures, as you've probably seen, worth more than $3 billion over the last couple of weeks with Tong Wei, with Tong Han, and so on and so forth. Okay. okay. So, um, and, and how is it, um, so that means you, 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 you are all started shipping at the moment. So, um, um, is, is there any regions that are sort of preferred? So where, where do, uh, where, where, where are the, the new big products are, are going first and what, what, who are you addressing? The modules are in short supply these days. Uh, and, uh, Gonzalo? Hello? I would say, I mean, we, we treat all regions and all partners equal, so <laughs> we, we, we don't have any preference. But of course, like because, the of the, oh, so. <laughs> but because of the size of the, I mean, we started, don't forget, we started with mass production in Q3 last year. So obviously most of the volume because of the size of the Chinese market went into China which doesn't mean that we didn't say uh, sell anything in, in, into Europe. As a matter of fact, we delivered 50 megawatts of one project in Europe of um, our 210 uh, DE18 module. Okay. So we're treating, again, uh, there's, there's no preference. If they're going into all the regions, with big acceptance everywhere. So we're quite happy with uh, the results we're hearing from all the regions. Okay. Yeah, like, like I just mentioned uh, in the previous uh, paragraph, I think uh, uh, in Europe, uh, mostly of East Europe, because they Ukraine and uh, uh, what is it, Pol Poland and uh, Russian, they like to use uh, this kind of new things. 
because uh, they are new players, so they they, they try to play uh, try to try to have the new high high power and the best efficiencies modules, and also the Vietnam market is is using this kind of financial as modules as well, and mm -hmm. can like Titan Asia module or Vertex. So also the a little bit to Australia and we just we just signed a big contract to uh to Brazil. So I think there's no preference it's like everybody is accepting. But it's a little bit tricky. We probably rising is not that, uh, doing very well in China market. So uh we don't have that much like sales in China market right now. But uh yeah, it will raise up this year. Um yeah. Okay. Um, then, then let's maybe talk about um, a little bit product qualifications. So when we talk about um, quality control for these new products, um, so I think there was also one question from the audience on, on micro crack impacts and so on. So, but what have you been seeing uh, about quality control during production and also with um, maybe during testing and also then um, with the first product. So simply when you look basically from the start to to um, to installation and, and operation level. So so what have you been seeing so far? I think we need to uh, have lots of new measures to deal with the 210 modules. Uh, uh, from a theoretical point of view, it will bring more difficulty in, in micro crack control. Uh, but you need to uh, carry out new measures. Uh, er everyone, everything you need to adapt to to time production. Uh, so uh, after all these downsing, uh, I think the micro still can be well controlled. Okay. Yeah. As far as I heard, uh, no, mostly like micro crack things are not that uh, big problems right now, and uh, even we can have a better. Uh, quality uh, than uh, the products before uh, or uh, uh, better than smaller products. So about this part, I think uh, we can, uh, you can email to, uh, email to me or some, uh, that, uh, Mr. Song and we can reply you in uh, uh, with some data, yeah. Okay. Uh, in terms of, um, yeah, I, maybe also something like IC PVEL testing or anything like this. So um, what, what, what did you, did you, did you um, uh, see any, any different, um, any different issues like when you compare it to earlier products or, or, or smaller products in the past now that you've gone to really a, a completely different dimension? Are you saying the, the 210 products compares to previous products has uh, some like differences or I, I, I don't quite get you, sorry? No, the question is if when you, when you had them at, um, at, in the standard testing institutes actually to get um, IC standards and w whatever. So um, if, you, if, you, if you saw something different than you, than you saw um, um, actually with with previous models, smaller modules? Um, oh, most, uh, uh, as far as I get uh, the most information, I think it's all better uh, than the, uh, the products before. So that's why we choose to use the 210 modules uh, and to promote 210 modules to choose this, uh, this, uh, uh, this direction to do the, the 210 modules. Uh, this is, I think, I think I don't see anything like uh, it's uh, uh, weaker or, uh, or worse, uh, I mean, uh, 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 less, less worse uh, than before, yeah. I mean, um, I, think, I think one thing you have to highlight is that, of course, that due to the higher current that we had to, we had to redesign at least for the junction box. And also now the testing we do on, on module and component level takes this into account. Um, also on the packaging size, I mean, coming back to the micro cracks, I mean, we have redesigned also our packaging for these bigger modules for obvious reasons. And we have done uh, the necessary tests and uh, prepared everything for the launch of this module. 
Okay. Actually, there's no big difference compared to the previous modules. Unless you have something new on the 210 module, say like you're using uh, 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 triangle ribbons or using some uh, paving technologies, small gap technologies, uh, this will bring some uh, uh, new uh, uh, testing issues. But if you have the measures to, uh, to well controlled, and uh, there should be no reliability problems. Okay. Um, then, then let's let's talk a little bit uh, about the, the the market response. Um, so, so how do markets have reacted on that? I think um, um, you, you guys are, are pushing hard um, that this is the way to go. Um, and um, and how how have have been developers EPCs in, in embracing um, the, the new format? Uh, to Ryzen, we uh, we we have received a, a lot of orders in 2020 and 2021 uh, to order in uh, like a bigger, I mean, 550, uh, 550 module or uh, five, uh, 500 watts module, I mean, Titan series. So in uh, the market, I think uh, they accept uh, the uh, they accept the uh, the new modules, the bigger size modules, are very very fast, and uh, all, mostly are like uh, new countries that they accept them a lot. And, I mean, new countries that not like uh, old, uh, not like old markets like uh, uh, Germany or like a uh, Europe market that. Uh, uh, mostly are like uh, po uh, like uh, the, the countries I mentioned: Poland, Ukraine, uh, Vietnam, and uh, Cambodia. These countries. So I think th these new players they want to they are new. They want to learn more, and they want the best pro uh, best products. Uh, so uh, to make their solar farm or solar projects uh, better uh and higher efficiency so this is what this is what we uh, what i see in the market response i would say that nowadays everybody's asking for this type of module i mean interest is there no doubt about it and then i mean as leon said some will go for it some a little bit hesitant it depends also a little bit on the on the on the, on the way a company works uh, but we at trina we have orders now already um our books for 10 gigawatts for 210 modules and uh, we're seeing that this number is increasing further um, so we've seen a, a big acceptance um, I, I wouldn't say talking now about Europe that it's only the new markets also in the in the old or existing markets and um, I mean we, we have the orders and there's no conversation where we don't talk about 210 absolutely not uh, Gonzalo, you just, uh, if I recall correctly, you just had Next Era sign up for four gigawatts. Um, right. If I recall correctly, I think that's a pretty big deal. So, um, I, <laughs> is that I'm five? Sure. Yeah. You want to join us, Leon? <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> come on, give some share. <laughs> If you, um, but maybe, I don't know how much you were involved, but can you maybe share actually what the the, the, the biggest points from um, next year were that you had to convince them for for that project uh, for that product? So what what were uh, the, the most interesting part to them? Yeah, honestly, this was closed by the U.S. team, so there's not much that I, I know about. Sorry to say. Yeah. Okay, but. Um, so, but but in general, so when you have discussions then with players, yeah. so what do you see? Where where is the curiosity of you, and, and where are the hesit Where is the hesitance? Because of course, some yeah. some players they have their own mounting um, systems, and for them it's a headache to to go to new formats, right? Correct, correct, correct. I mean, as you, as you can imagine, the, the most interesting question or topic for for partners or potential partners is, of course, why shall I take it? What's the difference with uh, 182 or 166? But what's really interesting is, um, you know, what's the advantage on the LCOE side, on the BOS side? And, um, you know, this is then when, of course, with some calculations that uh, we have done, or that sometimes the customers have done, we can explain it if they can see it easier. And uh, what they challenge us also on the calculations. And then we're, just as you said, when with a little bit, we are hesitant or with a, is when they ask, okay, as you said, which structure can we use? You know, how many 
uh, manufacturers can do this, same with inverters. But this is relatively easy to, to answer because again, coming back to the Alliance, we have their um, uh, inverter manufacturers like Sangro, like Huawei, like SMA who offer these, and these are only uh, some examples that offer these type of inverters and the same for the structure. And don't forget that we, as Trina, we own uh, Enclave, which is a tracker and uh, fixed structure manufacturer. So then, you know, the conversation then gets easier. <laughs> Okay, um, so I think so what was interesting, so I think there were also a couple of questions um, regarding uh, rooftop systems and uh, and 210 and what the advantages are there. I, I understand um, you um, you have um, also introduced products for, for that um, segment. Um, can you maybe also um, once again explain what's the, what's the benefits there of 210? Uh, about the the you you mean the, the rooftop rooftop scale right? Yeah. Like, yeah. About rooftop scale, uh, we have like uh, two ways. Uh, there's um, there are some customers they try to use the, the original the original Titan uh, si bigger size uh, to to put on their rooftops uh, as their rooftop system. These are kind of like uh, customers. They 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 really like two ten uh two ten uh I mean Titan our, our, our team is Titan yeah so but now we have uh, we have tried to we have found out that uh, uh, there are another another kind of customers they need a smaller size uh, high voltage as well uh, uh, high watts as well so we have the same standard like uh, Vertex S, uh, Vertex S. Uh, we call the, the to our foreign customers is Titan S. The Chinese name is still uh, still named in that right now. Uh, it's uh, it's a little bit lighter than uh, China's uh, uh, smaller module rooftop module. I mean uh, Vertex S. But uh, we we will launch it in April and uh, we will show it to our customers uh, very soon. So no worries about that. Okay. Yeah, we also launched a module uh, for rooftop segment based on 210. And we believe uh, rooftop segment is very important. And uh, the big module based on 210, which is I uh, showed just in the previous slide, is designed for utility application. And so for the, if you go to rooftop, you need to have a smaller modules and uh, that will be uh, promoted soon. Okay, okay. Leon answered already the question for me. I mean, we have the Vertex S, as you know, ramping up now. And it's, um, I, I like to call it the, the quasi 60 cell module, similar to a 60 cell, 166 millimeters by size. So it's like uh, 1.7 meters high and 1.09 wide. So it's below the two square meters. And, um, you know, it, it offers you more than 400 watt of, of power. So it's, in our in our opinion, better than the 360, 370 watts that you have right now in the market as standard. How how important is this um, two square meter um, limit actually, which you have theoretically in Europe? So, um, but uh, is everyone sticking to that actually, or um, uh, so so and and? You mean all the manufacturers or? No, no. Actually, on the on the demand side. So, are we are are we seeing actually only small rooftop modules under two square meters um, uh, systems under? Um, yeah. That's, that's what we are hearing as a as a request from the market that we should uh, that we should have or we should offer a module below two square meters for for the rooftop specifically for the rooftop, and this is why or one of the reasons why we developed the bird access. Yeah, I think, but in Europe, it's a regulation. So it's not just because they want to have it handy, but it's everything which is Correct. connected to a roof uh, cannot be larger than two, two square meters, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, then um, let's um, mm, see. So uh, uh, and maybe a little bit of reliability also in terms of transport installation op operations. So we 
the wafers are larger, modules are larger, power is higher. So, so what what have you seen for the for the first um, from the first systems? Um, what what was your feedback there? Whoever. I mean, we we haven't seen. Um... I mean, we haven't seen, how shall I say, more more claims or more accidents, or I don't know how you call it, you know, more broken modules. Um, um, of course, partners at the beginning were a little bit worried about the installation time. Uh, we haven't heard anything negative, I mean, from those who have already bought it, and not at all. And as I said before, I mean, um, we, we have adapted the packaging. Um, so we are not hearing any, any claim or anything negative in comparison to the Older, older modules. Uh, to the modules we have shipped out and connected to the grids, we did. Uh, we still haven't get any like a uh, bad feedback. But the mostly, uh, I want to say that because uh, um, uh, we we want to we want to help our customers to have uh, the power of rising value. So this is why we have, we have in the two ten modules right now, and I we, we didn't we didn't see uh, hasn't seen anything bad feedback coming out. Okay, okay, that's uh, good news. <laughs> yeah, um, there's a there's a there's a part that uh, another some companies mentioned that uh, the bigger the wider, so you cannot uh, hold the. Uh, module like this, the uh, you, uh, uh, original you hold module like this, but then you cannot hold it like this and to go up the roof. But uh, as I saw the, the, the labor cell to, to install, uh, install the, the modules of our Titan, Titan modules, they just, they just, they just have a, a, maybe a, a tower, a bigger tower, and put it on the put it on the shoulder, and then go up to the roof. This is the kind of skill, and uh, this is not like so. Installation is not like uh, some companies saying that uh, oh, you can you can only move the module like this. Why why don't you move much like this? It's uh, it's better, right? <laughs> it's kind of funny, right? Okay. Good. Um, so let's maybe talk a little bit of, of, of what do you think um, actually, of course, you're all expanding your 210 capacities. So, but, but what do you think will be, um, will be the share of 210 um, already here? Um, because I think um, the question is also, are we seeing um, some limitations on the wafer side? Because um, um, it's, you have all internal capacity. Except well, you have some internal capacities, Canadian um, some more, um, but um, the, the wafer manufacturer everyone relies mostly on is, is John One. Um, so, um, so, so is, are there are there bottlenecks with this, or um, does it all work out so so first um, to 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 meet your your plans? And um, second, what do you think will we see in in terms of market? Uh, this year already for 2.10 and next year? Um, I think 2.10 is just the beginning from today. And we believe in the next five years, 2.10 will be the mainstream products. And in China, we have a roadmap on the uh, wafer. And uh, I'm also in discussion with the uh, teams. So we believe in 2025, uh, uh, the market share for 210 will be uh, more than 50 percent and then 182 maybe have also like uh, 30 percent uh, so that means 210 years uh, will have a higher market share compared with 182 yeah so okay. the wafer level will um, decide also the shell cell share and also the model share yeah this is one of the information Okay. Leon Gonzalo, maybe, or what's your you? I think Gonzalo. I think you have the the biggest expansion plans. Uh, so I think uh... <laughs> <laughs> for us, all it's two ten. No, seriously, no kidding. No, even for us, I mean, uh, end of twenty twenty one, end of this year, our two ten will be around eighty percent of our of our output. 
Um, so you can imagine what our strategy is. I mean, of course, to extend it over the next year. Um, and I, I, I share Dr. Wong's uh, opinion. Um, well, obviously, because we have, this is the technology that we chose and what we're investing now more than $3 billion. And um, we also foresee that um, this should be the future and should be the larger share of the market by 2025. Are we going to use bigger wafers in the future? This is a good question for, for our R&D department. Um, again, I think in semiconductors, you're still with the 300 millimeters. I'm not sure if they, they increase this. Um, even though I'm pretty sure that they have been looking into it. So I, I think that for the next five to 10 years, the 210 or 300 millimeter wafers will be, will be the main runner or the, at least that's my personal opinion. I don't see now a next step coming in two years to, to larger size wafers or so. Mm, I think 210 in this year is uh, becoming the mainstream right now. Uh, uh, if you guys using WeChat and have my WeChat friends, you will see me uh, posting a lot of like a uh, 210 ING, something like this. Um, but uh, the, but uh, let's say, what if you, what if you guys know the, the, the original 210 maker is not three of us. Uh, so, Everybody will use 210 in the future. Uh, the 182 is just uh, processing, uh, processing, processing that uh, to reduce their um, uh, reduce their cost, reduce uh, their they try to change their uh, com uh, old capacity to new capacity. So in the, eventually, yeah, all the companies will use 210 modules. Yeah. Sheng, you agree? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. so let's um, um, let's maybe um, think about so yeah. So what comes next? I think the the question. So that means if the wafer size stays the same to ten, so it's just about that we are moving to new technologies. So that means, um, as we just learned, Danny mentioned that also during his talk already, that for HJT, it might take another while if we go there. Although I think Ryzen has, uh, has um, already a, a roadmap to 700 watt plus modules for which you will need um, HJT, um, um, I assume. Um, but is it, can we really um, simplify that, that at the moment then, uh, so this is a new format. We have the bigger modules. Probably modules will not get any, any bigger in size. Um, we will have 210 and now it's back to the cell technology. And uh, we will see um, a little few slight improvements to PERC, but once on the 23% level, um, it's somewhere there, it's over. And then we have to move to TopCon to HJT and maybe towards the end of the decade to, to um, to tandem cells? Is, is this, this how, how it will work? Yeah, we believe HJT is a good platform and uh, on that platform you can combine with uh, a proverse kite to have a uh, structure like tandem structure uh, to go beyond the uh, 25-26% uh, cell efficiency. This can be the future. And HJT has a very uh, simple uh, process flow uh, much uh, simple compared with even even compared with Perk, and uh, not to mention uh, Topcom. So I think personally, I think uh, HAT has uh, a very good future. Uh, just they needs uh, uh, more uh, uh, manufacturers go into this field, and uh, then we can work together to bring the uh, material cost down to a certain level to bring the manufacturing cost to down to a certain level. And so uh, HD module can be widely supplied on the market. Okay. Yeah, to, to as uh, Ryzen's uh, uh, HJT capacity, and we are probably like uh, in, let's say, in August of the 2019, we have uh, announced that uh, we are going to have the HJT hydrojunction uh, capacity. And um, after that, we bought um, 
con, uh, composed our HAT factory with uh, 500 megawatts, uh, let's, uh, in Chinese we say the testing line. <clears throat> so uh, in 2010, uh, total HAT uh, shipment is not that much. We, because uh, we have uh, pro been processing the, uh, the, the RD processing, uh, spent like uh, almost one year to raise to 24.5 efficiency. Um, the, the shipment of the testing line, we ship to mostly in Chinese, the Chinese the testing, uh, I mean, testing projects about 100 megawatts. Uh, the rest of module, uh, the rest of not my module, the rest of the uh, sales, uh, we sell to other countries. Some people who need that uh, to test it, or maybe to compose and uh, make it to modules. Uh, but uh, soon we will have an uh, one gigawatt purchase of the new HJT, uh let's say production lines. And uh, they will, they, they will, this will become our uh, uh, formal uh, production line of HJT. Yeah, this is what, what we are trying to expand uh, in in 2020, uh, 2021. Okay, I think um, that looks all fine. Um, I'm pretty upbeat and optimistic uh, about 210. So what I've heard from all of you, uh, that uh, was very interesting. Um, thanks to for you to be on the panel. It's late in China, so let's try to uh, close in time. Uh, um, thanks again. And uh, just a few words, everyone, please stay with me for just a few more words. Um, so thanks for everyone staying with us here. So we're just about to close the, the first day on uh, 210. Uh, tomorrow we will have um, a second event. Min, can you just share some slides? Um, to, tomorrow we will have a second e day where we will go into advanced solar modules for residential. Then we will focus a bit more on the different segments. Um, tomorrow's sponsors will be um, Jinko, Longji and uh, Chint uh, will focus on the different segments. We will uh, launch tomorrow also our advanced module report, which will be available for down free download after the event. Um, we are looking forward to have Again, some excellent speakers from different companies. Um, and uh, we will also have um, a panel discussion. Um, Min, the slides. There you go. So that's who we are expecting to have. And um, um, since many companies are expanding in solar, so do we. We're looking for some solar market technology analysts. If you are, um, if you are looking for a new job, um, feel invited to apply with uh, Time News. Thanks again to the event sponsors um, and see you back hopefully tomorrow. Have a nice evening and good night. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Michael. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you, Michael. Thanks.